Hello, welcome. Today we're doing something a little bit differently. Although I've done this video before in the past, but we're tweaking a little bit. Either end of December or early January, I cannot remember when I posted it. <laughs> I did all the books that I read in 2020, Three, right? I just forgot what year it was for a hot second. I'm doing great. Not overwhelmed at all right now. <laughs> Hence why I needed a little chill sit down chat with you kind of video. I need the break. I hope you enjoy this. But last year my reading goal was to read 20 books I believe and I can't remember how many I actually ended up reading. My brain has forgotten that number entirely. I think just over 20. Who knows? But this year I was like I'm gonna up my game. This year I set my goal to read 30 books and it seems like I might actually exceed that, which is insane to me, absolutely insane. But I have been prioritizing this year in my life, resting and slowing down a little bit and not making my job my entire existence because what's the point, you know? And one of the ways that I love to chill out is reading books. And I would say 90% of the books that I read, I didn't buy them. They're from the little libraries or a friend of mine. We trade back and forth our books. And often I'm like, hey, when you're done with this book, you can either give it to someone else you know or put it in one of the little libraries, you know, pass it on as one does. But sometimes I do buy books. Sometimes I, I do buy a book or a series and I just, I have to keep it because I do intend to reread it. There's just some books, you know, that you just absolutely love. For me, I feel like the book system is similar to, um, what's it called? Like movies. Like there's some movies that are your comfort films and you will rewatch them over and over again. And there's other movies you've watched them once and you're like, that was enough. <laughs> so with that, I wanted to go over the books that I've read and my opinions, of course. Let's see if I can pick these up. Oh, shoot. I've read 12 books so far this year. <laughs> we're, re we're really flying through and April isn't even over. So oh, I will show you the book that I started reading yesterday as well. But yeah, 12 books so far. Okay, let's hop to it. Okay, so the first book I read this year was actually a children's book. It was Greek myths and I could not recommend more getting a children's book like this. It has all the Greek myths in it, so it's short. Like it's just a couple pages will end up being one of the stories. See, that one was the only like a whole page or you can read a couple of them, but it's short and sweet and to the point and they're perfect little stories to read before going to bed. Now I know that there are books similar to this out there that are just bedtime stories. There is nothing saying you can't read this just because you're an adult. You can read a bedtime story. You can put on your fairy lights, put on a soundscape podcast and read a little bedtime story and go to bed. That's fine, it's okay. But yeah, I absolutely adored this book and we'll keep my eyes peeled for different little, I know we have some in our, we have our I call it our library closet here in our house. That's where I've sorted through all the books and I actually put them in reading levels. So like uber beginner up to, my mom has some books from college. She was a linguistics major that go right over my head. <laughs> but yeah, super cute. Absolutely love this. The second book I read, now I was kind of late to the game because like technically Christmas was over when I was finishing this up. I started it near the end of my Christmas break. So like, who cares? It's a Christmas spirit by Debbie McComer. Debbie McComer writes sappy, happy, little rom-coms. Like, these are feel-good vibes. They will leave you with faith in humanity again. <laughs> that's, that's the only way I can put it. But I really enjoy Debbie's writing. You know, it's just, it's comfort. If I were to be anywhere and I needed to pick up a book from a random library or whatever, and I just needed to guarantee that it would be a calm, content read, I would pick up one of Debbie's books. And this was extra fun to read just because tis the season. Also, I really support reading books that take place during the time of year it actually is. I hope that was English. Whether it be spring, fall, summer, whatever, like I like to read more spooky series, witches and whatnot in the fall, cause Halloween. <laughs> I feel like a lot of Jane Austen books would be fabulous to read in the spring, you know, Pride and Prejudice, things like that. Just the vibes, the vibes match. Okay, the third book got me hooked on a series. This is No Safety Numbers. Now, I don't usually read suspense thriller books because I have anxiety <laughs> and sometimes they make it worse. <laughs> However, this was more of a YA novel so it wasn't as intense as like more adult themes can be, but I enjoyed it. Kind of gave me the same vibe of just the Hunger Games, Divergent, 
Maze Runner, you know, similar, similar energy level, but it was a very different subject matter because those I feel like were set in a world that doesn't quite exist. This was set in reality. The first book was a really good setup. It got you into it and I like where it ended quite a lot. It felt like the perfect kind of drop off point making you want to read the next book. Like what happened? You can't just stop there. But I love this book and it was short and sweet. I got through it in just honestly just a couple days and we will get to the rest of the series. But I had to order the other two books in the mail and wait for them. So while I was waiting, here's the book that I read in between. Smack dab in the middle of that series, I read The Ivy Tree. Okay, so this is clearly written in British English versus American English. There is a difference because some of the words and the phrasing. I have no idea what you were saying to me. But eventually after like Googling phrases and words a couple times, I started to learn and catch on. <laughs> with my big smooth brain, I was able to actually get into the story, which I think just because of the language barrier, so to speak, in the beginning, <laughs> that's why I had a hard time at first getting into the story, but then I was pretty into it. And of course, as I do with any mystery, I figure out who it is and what's going on within the first chapter. Will I ever know peace? Who knows? Then we were back onto the series after reading that. No easy way out. Clearly it's much thicker than the first book. And I'm gonna give you a little sneak peek. The third book is super thin. When I did my book review of this previously, as I mentioned, I forget what point, but it was like maybe this much of the book at the end could have gone as the beginning of the third book, in my opinion. Because so the third book, even though I wanted to read it and I wanted to, I wanted to, that last little bit of the story, as a book itself, it felt like it was lacking rise and fall. It was just kind of like that slow tapering off. I think if this broke off where the climax really hit, where everyone became their most chaotic selves and then it dropped off there, like what's gonna happen? And then the chaos started this book and then the resolve, I think it would have been a little bit better in my humble opinion. Opinion. But I also think you can clearly tell because uh, they use substitute words for curse words instead of just curse words. So I think this was originally supposed to be a little more intense and maybe more adult versus young adult. And it might have been just one long book. And I think I would have liked it better as one long book. So I'm glad that I read them sequential almost back to back, but still loved it. Absolute chaos. Kind of Lord of the Flies vibes. And then, like I mentioned, No Dawn Without Darkness was the last book in the series. It wrapped it up. I wouldn't say it wrapped it up nicely with a bow. And there was still like a tiny bit of open-endedness that I kind of liked. It just felt more like real life. Like you go through insane, awful, terrible things, but it doesn't just end after. You know, you're left with a lot. You're left with baggage. <laughs> I would know. But like I said, I think part of the last book should have slapped on the front of this one and just made it a little more really, really eloquent with the words today. But I still loved it. Still really enjoyed this book and really enjoyed the series overall. What book am I on? One, two, three, four, five, six, the seventh book. Two Way Street. This was your classic 2008 teen, early college something rom-com as a book. It had all of the classic setups and the relationship drama. Also had some political incorrectness that was for some reason allowed in like TV and movies in the early 2000s that would not fly today, but it felt like a time capsule of that period in time of media. They're um, on a road trip, in case you're wondering. I can imagine her reading a Cosmo magazine during this car ride. It's complete with low-rise jeans. I mean, what more could you want, honestly? <laughs> it was addicting just like any of the TV shows at that time, honestly. I just needed to know what was gonna happen. I needed the next episode, I needed the next chapter, and I liked how it was written, how it jumped to present time and then back and forth and between their two views of the situation. It was, the format kept it very interesting, very dynamic, I loved it eighth book, Almost Just Friends. I adored this book. The setting it took place in, I want to go on vacation there. I want to take a long weekend where I detox from my phone and bring a bunch of books and just hang out and vibe. The description of this location just made it sound like heaven. I really enjoyed the characters as well. I really love that one of the characters was gay and I liked that that character in particular, even though they weren't just the sidekick. You know how sometimes there's a queer character, but they just make them the sidekick and they never get into who they are and who they're dating or whatever. They do that in this, like they're a fully fleshed out person. I'm like, thank you, thank you. Thank you for just treating them like a human being. What a concept. But aside from that, the root story was adorable. It, <laughs> I mean, it had its up and downs, ups and downs. I cannot talk. I mean, it had its ups and downs. It was your classic rom-com story at the base root level, but it had these subplots going on in it that just made it a very, heartwarming 
story. It really embodied modern day families, if that makes sense. I also picked up another one of her books and I'm so excited to read it. In fact, it's the one that's literally on the back of this, so stoked for that. Tenth book. You cannot see it because it's black on black, but it's like textured. It says poor unfortunate, poor unfortunate souls. Can you guess who it's about? <laughs> this is essentially part of the villain origin story of Ursula. Why she is the way she is. I did make a mistake though. This is the third book in the series, so I didn't read the first or the second, but it's a good standalone book. There's only three characters that left me wondering who are they? That I probably would have known who they were if I read the first two books prior, and I had the first two books. I just didn't know they were a series. I thought this author wrote the villain origin stories of all the Disney villains. I didn't know they were intertwined, which is very cool, very creative. So I'm excited to read the first and second one. I'll probably do that soon because this is kind of still fresh in my memory, but very interesting. That was the ninth book, by the way. And then this is 10, 11, 12. This is two books in one. So halfway through, I don't know if I can find it. Sorry, it cut off because my memory got full. So the 10th book that I read this year was A Family for Easter. Now this is a double digest, so I read the second book first only because it was Easter weekend. This was just a classic rom-com, people from two different worlds coming together because of love. But not in real life, but in these books, sometimes I enjoy the villain, so to speak, of the storyline, <laughs> just because they can be quite the character. And the villain in the storyline was indeed a lot <laughs> and just an absolute menace. Like they just put their fingers in and mucked it up. That like, they just, they just were, they're busy mucking, <laughs> running amok. And I mean, of course, like they had good character development, but I, I have to admit, I enjoyed them being a menace. Like they were a straight up Karen, <laughs> but sometimes you're just like, Ooh, like they're here to wreak havoc. Then I read the first book in this double digest, Ready for Marriage. I love a good Debbie book. They're just so comforting. This is one of her early on books that basically got republished as this little double digest. It was like a story of rekindled love. And my favorite character in the story was her six-year-old niece who was like, yeah, you don't like the guy that you're dating. You like this guy. And it's very obvious. Like she was just calling them out. <laughs> She was hilarious. She had the smallest little part, but that my brain was just like, I adore her because I was her. I was, I was that niece. I was that niece. I was calling people out. What can I say? But I, I really enjoyed this. Okay. The last book I read so far this year, I think this video will end up being part one out of three. I, that, that's what I'm guessing. Every 10 ish books, I think I'm going to do this because if I end up with more, it's just, it's just too much. <laughs> the 12th book I read this year was Window on the Bay by Debbie McComer. And this is a little longer of a novel and I loved it. It took me a week and a half to read instead of a little less than a week like it normally does, but I enjoyed that. It was this cozy safe space that I kept going back to at the end of the day, or sometimes I would start the day with it while drinking my coffee. And I just loved it. I really enjoyed the story. It's about two best friends, lifelong best friends who met at like 18, 19 years old in college and now jump forward their empty nesters for the first time and trying to process that and trying to like re-enter the dating pool and they're supporting each other and coaching each other through that and just sisterhood girl power, you know, all the classics. The ending was kind of melancholy, if I have to be honest. It made me cry, but also it just turned out how life turns out, if that makes sense. I still loved it, but just because there's some repeated motifs of every rom-com in this, I'm gonna give it like a four and a half out of five, but it was still a wonderful story. Definitely suggest reading it if you just want a cozy, comfy little book to read. Okay, those are all the books that I've read so far this year. And now I started yesterday reading Her Dark Lies. I actually have two copies of this book. This is my sister's copy that she got at a garage sale last summer. And then I received a free version in the mail. I gave the free one to my friend who like we trade books with and kept this one. She just finished reading it and she doesn't normally do thriller novels. But I was like, hey, you, I'm like, you wanna read it? She's like, yeah, sure, I'll give it a try. And she said she enjoyed it. And I'm noticing that it's written differently than most murder mysteries. I'm kind of vibing with it. Although I'm only 40 pages in, I haven't yet been able to predict the situation, which is so cool for me because normally I can figure out who done it within the first couple chapters. And then I'm kind of just going through the, the motions. It feels like a little bit this one so far, I don't know what's going on and I like it. <laughs> Hopefully the review for this will be as good as the first impression is. And yeah, but yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video. It was a nice little break from the regular daily vlogging routine. And comment down below some of the books that you've read so far this year that you really enjoyed. 
I'd love some recommendations and if you've read any of the ones I have or if you do read the ones that I've shown you and you have your own thoughts, please share them. I would love to hear it. Let's talk about books. I love to talk about books. Okay, with that, I will see ya when I see ya. <laughs> and I'm gonna go read my book now. <laughs>